We're back with you today on this occasion to come to you from the word of the Lord. If it is the case that you might have any questions in regards to the lesson that is presented, we ask you to please to call the number on the bottom of the screen. We would have you to please turn to Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, looking at verse number 36 through verse 38. We want to talk briefly from the lesson, What Must I Do to Be Saved? What Must I Do to Be Saved? In Acts chapter 2, beginning at verse 36 through verse 38, and let all the house of Israel therefore know assuredly that God has made him both a Lord in Christ, and this Jesus whom you crucified. And now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, the brethren, What shall we do? And Peter said unto them, Repent ye, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, unto the remission of your sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Well, today we would like to talk to you briefly from the lesson again. What must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? Well, this is a question that anybody ought to ask when he's lost in this world. And to be lost in the world could mean and that one is lost in many things. It may indicate that one is lost in a raging fire, and he screams from the midst of the fire to see whether there is somebody to rescue him. And it may be that one is lost in a blinding storm, stumbling about every which way, falling to the heart of the earth. And it may mean that one is lost in a helpless sickness, which he can do nothing about. And what must I do to be saved? It indicates that a man is lost. He may be lost again the tossing sea to and fro and thus to be lost in the world could mean many things but I know that Adam and Eve were lost and they were lost from the tree of life and as a result of the sins that they committed against God in the garden and they were lost and as a result we come about in their shoe steps but also were lost and I tell you and that when a man is lost from the tree of life and brother he is lost in this life he loses so much in this world that in Revelation 22 I think I want a Revelation 22 and maybe that's Revelation 22 22 yeah Revelation 22 verse 1 and through verse number 5 and then he showed me the river of the water of life Bright as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God, and in of the Lamb, and in the midst of the street thereof, and on this side of the river, and on that was the tree of life, bearing twelve manner of fruits, and yielding its fruits every month. And in the leaves and all the trees were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no curse anymore. The throne of God and of the Lamb shall be therein. And his servant shall serve him. And they shall see his face. And his name shall be called on their foreheads. And there shall be night no more. And they need no light of the Lamb. Need the light of the sun, for the Lord God shall give them light, and they shall reign forever and in heaven. Adam and Eve, and they are examples that are people that were lost, and they were lost from the garden, and they were lost from the tree of life. Now, why were they lost? Because of all the sins that they committed. What must I do to be saved? Now, when a sinner is lost in his sin, then we know know and that he's lost from the God of the universe and the very God that created him he's now lost from that God and where is he lost and he lost in his sin lost in his ways and when a sinner that is lost and he's lost from the true home of the soul in the true home of the soul that is the church and when a sinner is lost and he's lost from 
and the only Savior and that is able to save a sinner. And therefore, when a sinner is lost in any sin, that he is lost from the great God of the universe. But what must I do to be saved? And what must I do to find the God of the universe? And what must I do to find the God that saves a sinner? And what must I do to find in the home of the soul? What must I do in order that I might be saved in this life? And by what means and ways the men and must recognize that he's lost. And you know, it is difficult in this life for a man to understand that he is lost. It is difficult. And scores of people are lost, but they don't believe they're lost. And they won't hear that they are lost. What do you have to do sometimes? You have to allow a man to keep on bumping his head against the same wall. And it may be that he will understand that he's lost. You have to allow him to keep on falling and in the same ditch. And it may be that one day he'll fall and he'll get up and recognize that he's lost. A man needs to compare himself to the world before he can understand that he is lost. Will you look with me? In Psalms chapter 19, and we need to look at the world about us to understand that we are lost. And note in Psalms 19 in verse number one, and when people look at the compare themselves to the universe, and they may understand that they are lost. Look what the text says, that the heavens and declare the glory of God, and in the firmament show this handiwork, and day under day utter his speech, night under night show her the knowledge and there is no speech nor language that voice is not heard and their line is going out throughout all of the earth and the words to the end of the world and in them they have set a tabernacle for the son which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and so then in Psalms 19 verse 1 through verse number 6 we must compare ourselves to the universe before for, and we can understand that we are lost in sin and when you look at the trouble about us, men are killing men, walls everywhere and terraces everywhere, that will make us understand that we are lost in this world, that we need a God well if we are lost, what must I do then to be saved, what must I do to be saved well, I would say to you today that you need the Holy Spirit and so that you and so that you can be saved. And why do you need the Holy Spirit? Somebody would say, well, you need the Holy Spirit because he is a person. And nobody can be saved if he doesn't have the Holy Spirit. And you need the Holy Spirit that brings about salvation and unto a sinner. And he is a person. And he is a person. Somebody would raise the question, why do I need the Holy Spirit? Because he is a person. What do you mean? He has a will like a person, just like we have a will so does the Holy Spirit in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse number 11 and you need the Holy Spirit because he's a person he has a mind just like you and I have a mind and therefore you need the Holy Spirit Romans chapter 8 and verse 27 and you need the Holy Spirit to be saved and because he has thoughts and just like you and I and have thoughts in 2 Corinthians 2, verse 10 to 13. And you need the Holy Spirit because he has knowledge. And just like we has knowledge. 2 Corinthians 2, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 10 and through 13. You need the Holy Spirit because he loves and has people love. And Romans 15, verse number 30. And therefore, in order to be saved, a man needs the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Why? Because he's a person, just like we are a person. He's not a stick. 
He's not a stone. He is a person. He's the third person of the Godhead that makes up God. And you need the Holy Spirit in order to be saved and in this world. And if you never get the Holy Spirit, then you can never and be saved and in this life. Well, I raise the question. How do a man get the Holy Spirit in today's world? What must he do? What must he say? How must he behave in order to get the Holy Spirit in this life? Well, this generation do not, there's some things that this generation do not need to do in order to be saved. We need to look at what this generation does not need to do in order that we may understand what this generation need to do in order to be saved. Number one, this generation does not need to tarry for the Holy Spirit. For the Holy Spirit was promised to the apostles in Luke chapter 24 and also in Acts chapter 1 and in Acts 2 the Holy Spirit came and this generation does not need to pray for the Holy Spirit why because the Holy Spirit is already here and he came long ago and in Acts chapter 2 if you would turn and read with me there Acts chapter 2, looking at verse number 1 through verse number 4. And when the day of Pentecost was now come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven, and as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them tongues, parting asunder, like as a fire. And it set up on each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues as the other Holy Spirit gave and the mother answer. What does this generation and does not have to do today and does not have to pray for the Holy Spirit and does not have to tarry for the Holy Spirit does not have to shout for the Holy Spirit does not have to consecrate themselves for the Holy Spirit and therefore there are these other things that this generation does not need to do in order to have the Holy Spirit living in the room and in the corridors of all the hall.